Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today for a special one, we've got our viewer requested video from ISO, our very own ISO. The topic is Package Q strike in the Gulf War. We are going to discuss the Package Q strike and the SAMs they faced, maybe reenact question mark. And we've got some information here. Package Q strike. We'll read through some paragraphs here, not all of it. To give you an idea, this was an event. I think, believe it was supposed to be a three day event, but it turns out it was essentially cancelled and became a one day event due to it not working very well. The date was the 19th of January 1991. The package coup strike was the largest airstrike of the Persian Gulf War, Gulf War One, and the largest strike of F-16s in military history. So it's a big event. Many aircraft, including the F-117 Nighthawk, were used to attack targets in Baghdad, which was a mostly heavily defended area of Iraq. The same target was hit, hit, hit several times by F-117, and the last package consisted of 17 F-111Fs on the 19th day of the war. So what that's saying is that over several days of the war, the F-117 stealth bombers, fighter bombers, were attacking and then on the 19th came the package Q. The main target of the strike, so there were other targets, but the main target was uh, to Wather Nuclear Research Center near Baghdad, which was the site of the nuclear reactor that was attacked by the Iranian Air Force in 1980. We've got to reenact that as well. And again by the Israeli Air Force in 1981. We've got to reenact that as well, along with many other military sites across the city. Two aircraft were shot down, with two pilots becoming prisoners of war. The mission goal was not met with the reactors of the research facility only slightly damaged, although many of the secondary targets were hit. The F-117 aircraft re-attacked the facility at a different date, not part, not part of Package Q, causing significant damage. The attack was the largest of the war and represented an attempt to strike Iraqi defences a serious blow. The raid illustrated how a number of small incidences or stresses, none by themselves necessarily serious, could contribute to an unsatisfactory outcome, a mission failure, basically, which eventually, con which is here's the important bit, which eventually convinced the USAF commanders to call off further airstrikes against downtown Baghdad by conventional, i.e., non-stealth aircraft. So this was, if you like, the last of the big conventional attacks where we would send in uh, F-16s, F-15s. F-111s and so on. Uh, that stopped here because too many guys were dying and so we'd sent in on both sides and so we sent in F-117s with more precision strikes after that which is how things basically went from then on. So we've got a bunch of information if you want to come rude we don't have time now but you can look at the prelude to it, you can look at the strength of the force, you can look at the strike in fact the strength of the force is quite important because we'll be driving F-16s for our reenactment. But We have some F-4s with only two harm missiles because they couldn't carry enough gas. The F-16s, much more efficient engines, are carrying uh, Mark 84s plus two external fuel tanks plus two probably sidewinders I'm guessing and 90 bundles of chap and flares. The hostiles had um, MiG-29s, MiG-25s, MiG-23s, uh, various ZU-23s, as well as SAMs uh, in the era, era 1991. You're going to be talking SA-6. You're going to be talking SA-2 in the Persian Gulf. Looking here, the strength of the package on both sides, we had 56 F-16s, the biggest strike ever with F-16s, two of which were shot down, so bear that in mind. We had six times F-4s on um, Siad Wild Weasel. We had 14 F-15Cs on Cap or Escort. We had two times EF-111 Ravens, so a total of 78 aircraft, against thousands of SAMs and AAA guns. SAMs, we're talking SA-6, SA-2, uh, we're talking MAMPAD is mostly what we're going to see there. Uh, 25 MiG-23 Floggers, 20 MiG-25 Fox Bats, and 10 state-of-the-art MiG-29 S, um, just MiG-29, probably Alpha models actually. Uh, so a total of 55 aircraft casualties were these, uh, the two F-16s have shot down a hundred of military and civilian casualties and uh, serious damage done to oil refinery and air defences. As of the result, we can just read a bit of this. Uh, we're talking about the loss of the two F-16s can be attributed to a series of stresses, the lateness of the ATO, not enough coordination time, a tactical approach that provided the Iraqis considerable warning, fuel problems for the weasels, that's the F-4s, and other aircraft, bad weather, and insufficient attrition of the defences combined to create a dangerous situation. So presumably attrition of the enemy defences was supposed to be during or prior to the actual strike. There were a number of Crucial lessons learned from Package Q. The most obvious was that the Iraqi air defences remained lethal. Future strikes in Baghdad would then mainly switch to uh, next-gen stealth aircraft. What was happening next? We were meant to go on for another couple of days of, of uh, Package Q, but they were cancelled, is what it says here. And here, just reiterating the fact that 
you know, it wasn't uh, sustainable to send strikes like these, kind of almost kind of World War II type strikes where you send bucket loads of fighters in. It's just not a sustainable way of waging war. Now, from this comes a particular bit that we'd like to look at. It's one of the F-16 drivers. You've probably all seen this video before. F-16 dodging six Iraqi SAM launches during package Q. One of the F-16 goes in, two of them get shot down, one dodges six SA-2s and SA-6s, uh, and we'll go and watch that video and analyse it as well. So before we watch the video, it's going to be interesting to clear up. No chaff, no flare, no problem. This is our F-16 pilot during uh, package Q. During the package Q was truck and airbag. Baghdad 1991, Emet Tulia outflew at least six Israeli surface air missiles and Live to tell the tale. A famous, Roger, famous head up display video of his dancing with the Sam remains a teaching tool for the Air Force today. Then Major Tulia flew one of the F 16s assigned to the attack in the oil refiner of Baghdad and blah, 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 blah. Still, Tulia was surprised at the intensity of the ground fire as he approached the target. Anti aircraft shells were creating a virtual carpet of smoke, shrapnel in the sky, mostly at altitudes from 10,000 to 12,000 feet. It, I didn't expect it to be such a big effort on their part, he says. The first SAMs appeared just prior to roll in. There were two of them SA2s. I turned around, saw them coming, they went beneath us and overshot. Uh, he was getting some additional missile warnings, but he dived in and delivered his bombs on the now burning refinery. As he pulled off and headed south, the electronic countermeasures warnings escalated. He was now the hunted, not the hunter. He looked back and saw two missile plumes. He wondered if they were directed at him and it became clear uh, they were. Then I go, oh no, time to start manoeuvring, Julia says. He jettisoned his wing tanks to lighten up his F-16 and make it more nimble. Julia remembers thinking the, eject, uh, the effect of his move was pretty impressive. It really did make the difference. These two missiles also overshot and detonated harmlessly above the aircraft. He turned back onto the egress heading, but two more SAMs came at him from the left and from his right rear quadrants. Julia began dancing in earnest, uh, waiting until the last second before a hard turn to cause the missile to overshoot and detonate far enough away to avoid the shrapnel uh, damage to his fighter. At this point, he was separated from the right of his flight and losing altitude due to his offensive maneuvers. It was challenging because I didn't have a lot of chance to gain airspeed, he said. He had punched his wind tanks and did not have a lot of remaining fuel. Using the augmented thrust, it could made it possible for him to return to base. I was gambling that maybe uh, in the military power, I could still get enough airspeed to maneuver. And we're going to be talking about this, uh, looking at the um, uh, looking at the video. I was lucky because it did work out. And the way that he dodges the missiles and the restrictions that he had compared to what we would usually have in DCS. Things get very uh, different. Finally, he was out of SAM envelope and heading for south of the border at high altitude. A fellow pilot lagged back to keep him company. In the end, Tulio was surprised he had enough fuel to make it back. He, hand he landed at Qatar, put right off. I don't know how much gas I had. It couldn't be much, uh, he said. Walking around the F-16, his crew chief discovered that the chaff his chaff and flares had not dispensed. Ah, he had avoided those missiles without countermeasures, utilizing his flying prowess alone. I was kind of surprised. Um, uh, and that's it, it got Distinguished Flying Cross. So let's go and have a look at the video. Like I said, you've probably all seen it, but most people looking at this wouldn't really know how to read it. One thing you'll know is the terrible, terrible quality of it. And uh, now in 1991, cameras weren't this bad. Uh, we think maybe it's just been re reproduced so many times it's lost all its resolution. More likely, we think probably the Air Force softened it up before giving it to the public to make it look like this. They, they do that often. They take bits out or um, soften it up. Let's have a look at the symbology we're going to be look at, looking at in the F-16C. Along here, we've got our CAS speed. So that is our calibrated airspeed near enough to indicated airspeed in knots. It's currently about 375, which is a typical normal cruise speed. That there is our current G loading currently 0.9 so it's actually uh, ex technically experiencing slightly negative G and it, the fighters rated up to 9G or negative 4G I think it is down there is our Mac I can't read that at the moment but when it runs you'll see it's going to be about 0.8 or something like that for 375 uh, knots uh, here he's got his current mode, and I can't read what that is, but we will read that as we go here. Uh, this is historical G, so his max G he's done so far at this point in the mission is 3.6 G. That, I think that says fuel. I'm not sure what that's there. That's not on our F-16. You've got pitch ladder, you've got a horizon. So you can see the horizon is actually all the way up there. That shows how shit the video is uh, in terms of quality. There is our path marker. That is where the aircraft is actually going. There is our uh, magnetic heading tape, or probably magnetic heading tape. He's currently heading 3.0 zero so that is southwest essentially and uh, pitch ladder there and there various targeted information there we've got a utc there 
time on target. I'm not quite sure what that is there. This will be bombing attack information. Here we've got a radar altitude. It's so high that it's essentially off the scale. Here is our barometric altitude. You can see we're about 25,500 feet ASL. Interestingly, it can showing here where our target is. So we look from that cross, uh, our borsite cross, there's a line going out that way. That's telling that the target... INS target uh, is going to be down to the right by that many degrees. And I can't read that. 50 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure what that says. Pretty sure the fuel is fuel warning. Maybe. Roger. Let's just play it through. There will be some more bits that come up, but we'll show that as we go. So you see the target. Is, the target designator is actually down there where my mouse is. Found the target. He's going in from the left of the target for whatever reason. Just to say stop there. That beeping means that basically a missile's been fired at him. So all of all of a sudden, missile's been fired at him. SA2 launch. SA2 launch. So now watch what our man does to avoid evade. We're going to be watching. That's the horizon line. That's our path marker. So he's now flying upwards. He there's his cast speed. There is his because we can't see the terrain. It's all been blacked out by by the government. Here's our here's our speeds. Uh, altitude. We can see still his aspect and his attitudes. Let's see what he does. Which we'll speed go down? Look at his altitude go up. Look at his relationship to the target. So we can did we did uh, we did a Z left and right. We maintained altitude. In fact, we went up. But the problem is we've reduced speed down to 250. Remember, he can't use his afterburner at the moment because we're out of fuel. And uh, so someone's just said, I don't know if it was our man, I don't think it was, someone's jettisoned his stores and running away, basically, uh, egress. Um, now, note, this is very different how we'll do things in our simulator. In our simulator, rarely will we have bingo fuel at this point in a mission because we just don't fly you know 600 mile missions like they do like they did in real missions so we don't have to worry that much about fuel if a missile came at us we wouldn't just snake left and right with mill power it's a real recipe for disaster and a very brave thing for him to do what we would do is go full power and basically just run away from the missile or dive down however this guy has much more things to think about he's got to get the mission done he's got to think about his buddies he's got to think about his fuel it shows the difference between if you're like a real evasion and an ideal evasion because we like to do ideal evasions in dcs because we can because we don't have such big fuel problems and so on. Reduced by a couple of thousand feet back up to 300 knots. Note that he's pulling very low G. So for it evading a Sabbath DCS, like I said, we're going to want to do ideal, ideal turns. 6G, 7G, maybe up to 9G. He's only hit about 3G during dodging this SA2. So he's been incredibly efficient while and uh, and lean on his aircraft while dodging the sand, which is quite impressive. If that was me, I would just 9G the hell out of there. As well as that, as well as dodging this SAM, he's been fighting all the time. Note he's changed to CCIP, so he's now changed to a bomb mode, uh, mode of CCIP. You can see this is going to be a BFL bomb fall line here, and we'll see a cross at the end of it, and that will be the target, and you'll see... He's going to put his... Uh, there, you see that there, so CCIP pepper, that he's going to be him dropping his bombs. You see him diving? We can see his Q there. I haven't actually seen this bit yet, so let's just see what happens. He's diving to the target. He's now below 20,000 feet, up to 450 knots. Right. Waiting for bombs away. Right you just saw there a bomb go off on the uh, on the refinery there. Uh, sorry, not refinery. Um, whatever he was bombing. Sorry, I forgot. That was bombs away. You saw. I'm just going to go back ever so, ever so a little bit, so you can see his bombs away. So you can see he's, he's got the target there. I know you can barely make it out, but that's bombs away. He's out of here. Okay, so he was aiming. Although you didn't see it, he was actually aiming right down at the ground for the last 10 seconds or so. Look, he's down at 13,000 feet. So we've come down 12,000 feet now. He's put bombs on target from 13,000 feet. He doesn't want to go any lower due to AAA around the target. He's now got nearly 500 knots of speed in the bird. He's now going to get the hell out of here. Is that 
On the road, but you can feel our fender. Say again. Stroke. Gaining altitude, 16,000. Losing speed. Got a Sam on us. Watch his cast. He's already down to 250 knots doing that increase in uh, altitude. He's got a dodge now with low power, low fuel, and low kinetic energy in the bird. So this should be interesting. No, he's still in CCIP, so he forgot to take it out of bomb mode. That, you see, the missile just went straight past him. No, he's diving. We're down at a negative 22 degrees now, so we're diving down and he's going for speed again, gaining speed, losing altitude. Still in CCIP mode. There's an explosion. You see our guy's going southeast. 180 is south, uh, 090 is east, so he's heading southeast. 400 knots, still diving and oscillating. You saw a missile trail there. There, you see that missile? You're right by him there. You see, he's really starting to panic now, and you can see that because of his G fat. To look at that historical G is now 6.4 G, so he's working an airframe now. And bear in mind, he's still got uh, stores on the plane. No, he's reused all his kinetic energy up. He's 15k, but it's down to 200 knots now, so he's basically stalling the aircraft now. Blow south. See that missile trail there? That's SA2, SA6. It's trading speed for altitude. Sam, Sam, the target area. Stroke eight So you hear all that breathing, go, 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 that's, that's, that's panic, it's nothing else, because look at his G, he's literally pulling no G at the moment because he's so slow, but it's just, he's panicking. In my mind, what he wants to do is get his nose down and get his speed up. However, I am not a pilot, and it may very well be the wrong thing to do. So that's our man. We're still heading southeast, as you can see. Uh, we've got our speed and our altitude. It's done amazing to, to keep so much altitude, to be honest. I don't think I could have done that. And we can see here his current selected steer point. You saw it, it was at target, target number eight. He's now subject, He's now got back. He was doing some evasion, missile evasion. He's now got away from the missiles, and he's now selected steer point six, which is his egress, which is actually, if you go back in the video, the same as his ingress. So his ingress and egress are actually the same. And he's going to work his way back to waypoints all the way back to waypoint one and home. And with the steer points selected, you can see that we have a distance to steer point. So steer point six, his egress is actually 72 miles, that says, away to steer point six. So what he's going to do is going to work his way back to steer point six, the 72 miles, but he can't just fly straight as the crow flies because he's going to get peppered by Sam. So he's going to have to do it in a fishtail all the way, which is going to be rather exciting. So he's defending an SA6 over 5G. There, that little diamond there was a, a visual representation of the INS waypoint six, uh, 71 miles now. Sam Lodge, Sam Lodge. Another Sam. Start three defending. Fuck. So he's fish turning left and right, but but his mean, his mean um, heading of travel is still going to be uh, the. 
way, wherever the waypoint is, basically, the direction of the waypoint, which is east, uh, I think. Or southeast. 70 miles to go. So it's been told to ju it's been told to jettison this doors. 69 miles to go. It's calming down now. It seems to have beat on all of the missiles. Got some clouds there, I think. There's the INS waypoint. 67 miles to go. Got another missile on him. Got another missile. Off he goes again. Very slow. You can see he used his HOTAS there to switch steer points. So steer point wasn't steer point 6, it's now steer point 9, INS steer point 9. Can't read the number there, let's try and see if we can see it. So they've seen uh, that he's in trouble and they've changed him to steer point 9. And GCI or whoever's controlling this and it's 17 miles away, 17 miles. He's back to steer point 6 now. There it is. You can see he's slowly being getting lower and lower and lower and to maintain speed that's what he's had to do so it's simple um, attrition of his altitude to keep the speed up to be able to dodge these missiles so eventually he would have got killed if the SAMs had kept firing. See, every time he moves left and right, he's basing it around that diamond where the INS waypoint is. Only now has he gone... He had a massive panic, obviously, and he'd, the whole egress there, he was in uh, CCIP mode, so he'd left it in bombing mode. Um, and again, I'm not a pilot, but I'm pretty sure you shouldn't leave it in bombing mode. And he's only now gone into dogfight mode, which is an air-to-air -air mode. Um, so he's got his gun pipper up. I presume that's going to be it. Still going. Sixty-two miles to go. Got his level five gun sight out. Okay, I think we'll stop it there. And that was his uh, six missiles that he dodged, and the amazing thing was not the fact that he dodged them, was that the fact that he dodged them while doing the mission, which he did. And keeping his mechanical energy so good, kept his altitude, never went below Angel's 10, and uh, never stalled a jet. All those things are extremely hard to do. So, with that in mind, let's go and do our own Strike Q package now. So, here's our part of Q Strike. We're coming in from the east, as you remember. We're going to be coming from steer point 5. We're just representing a pair of F 16s. We've got some fake waypoints in here because we're just doing the actual strike. Waypoint 5, uh, sorry, steer point 5 uh, is going to be target 8, which is going to be on the nuclear reactors. And then steer point 6 is going to be 72 miles here southeast. Now, Interestingly, we believe the way it worked in the real mission is that they came from the east this way, attacked the power plant, and then came back roughly to the east or southeast that way. And the cool thing about the Iraqi SAMs is that they stayed quiet on purpose when the planes were coming in, to, as not to scare them away. The planes then dropped their bombs, and then just as the planes were dropping their bombs, all of the SAMs, the SAM network, then turned their radars on and started firing. So it was a trap, basically, a set of trap. And then when the planes were trying to evac, uh, egress away, they had to egress through the SAMs that had just turned themselves on. Now, we can do that in DCS, but it's a pain in the butt and I can't really be bothered. So what we've done to kind of simulate that is that we are ingressing and egressing from a different direction. We're going to egress here from the west in this case, and then we're going to, so we're ingressing here from the west, and we're going to egress here um, through this uh, fresh bunch of SAMs that are pretending they've just turned their radars on. In terms of equipment, as far as we can see, we've got a pair of tanks, a pair of Mark 84s as per the video, and we've got a pair of air-to-air -air missiles for self-defense. We'll keep it relatively slow in the ingress, about 300 knots or something. I'm just going to turn my shit on. RWR is on. Countermeasures are on. Master arm is on. Okay, going to steer point, um, ba, 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 ba. steer point five selected. You can see the designator on the ground there. That's our power station. Uh, sorry, yeah, nuclear plant, whatever it was. See, we're at twenty-five thousand as per the real strike. 
situation awareness there. We've got an RWR there. We've got SA2s and SA6s lighting us up like Christmas trees. Nothing's fired yet. Reporting nails. Okay, I'm going to air to ground mode now because I'm not a very good pilot. I'm CTIP. I'm good to drop. I'm going to put a pair out. Okay, distance to target is... What is distance to target, I'll see. Uh, oh, 19 miles. 19 miles to go. Let's do this ship. Just got to. Okay, Cap Spike. Uh, unknown radar, possibly SA6. Yeah, Spike. SA6, I'm here! The fuck? Shit! What's going on? Get the fuck hit me? It, it wasn't a. It's not a missile launch. It's not a missile launch. Okay, it's explosions in the air. It looks like AAA. It's artillery. It's your, your 88. Lovely. 13 miles to target. I'm hit, but I'm okay. Still spike. Stay high, stay high, remember. Oh, there's a warning. Okay, that's your problem, RC. Do what you gotta do. RC is gonna evade. Good luck. It's flak. It's, <laughs> it's look at that flak. There. It's flak, yeah. <laughs> Some nasty fucking flak. Cap's still spike, no launch. Cap is... Um, I'm gonna keep it on the right, just as the real pilot did. 10 miles, preparing to dive in. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Okay, I don't dare wait any longer. I'm going for it. No afterburner. Where's the goddamn target? I can't see it. Too much cloud cover. I'm going to have to bomb through the cloud. How are you going, RC? Still got a missile warning. Oh, I don't Roger. see anything. Keep doing what you got to do. Cap's about to put bombs on targets. Five miles. You see I'm diving down oh. there? RC's dead. I'm dead. Right, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. This just shows you how hard this is to do. It is, right? Okay, a little bit fast. Come on, when does the cloud cover in? Target spotted! Cap! Bombs away! Get up. Out of here. Cap, missile Target. launch! Where's the missile launch? Where's the missile launch? Hit the target, or you hit? The, yep. Help me with this missile launch. Uh, is on your nose. Shit, uh, your, uh, yeah, yeah. o'clock. Losing too much. You're way low. Yeah, I'm going up. I'm going up. I've lost the fucking missiles. I'm going me over too, again. Though. They're coming at you. Ah! You're on your nose. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Have I beaten them? Have I beaten them? Yeah, I think so. Woo! Super cap. Cap, spike again. Got to get some altitude. Cap, launch. Where is it? Where is it? You got it. 11 o'clock coming right at you. Two of them. Jesus Christ, oh. they're right next to me. Defeated. Second one is coming at you. Ah! Oh, <laughs> another one, another one. Yep, two you more. Mother, Jesus. At your nine o'clock. I've stalled, I've stalled. Get down below the mountain. Range I can't. Right I'm there. not allowed to. That's that's not as he did it. Oh, well, you're too low. In oh, there's one, two, three. Ah! You got at least four out on you right this now. This is problematic at best. Aspects. <laughs> How the fuck did he do this? You're too. High. You're way too low. I know, but I would be dead if I'd stayed up there like him. <laughs> like me. Uh, you got to come right at you. I can see them, I see them. Oh, right next to you. Ah! Brother! <laughs> brother! <laughs> Jesus, I felt that guy! Oh, the face! In the face! <laughs> oh! We beat about four or five of them. Yeah. Good job. Well... I mean, it just shows how... It's the point I was trying to make was that the guy wasn't losing altitude. To beat those missiles, you've got to go down. He managed to beat all six while staying high. How do you do that? Dunno. No idea. Magic. But even going low, like 5,000 feet, I still couldn't beat them. So... Boom! I died it, I'm afraid. You had a ton out, aren't you? That was pretty cool. Um, anything you want to add to that, RC? Pretty... It was good fun. <laughs> No, All right. it was good. 
I just was, think hitting a hit by flak over. Yeah, I was like a one in a million shot. I got the flak right in the middle of my wing. I was like, you serious? <laughs> Typical. Right. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.